Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to talk about Amazon KDP and specifically I want to help you increase your sales by sharing that KDP guy on Twitter's five tips to increase your sales right now on Amazon KDP. Now he sold 18,000 books last year on Amazon KDP, so he certainly knows what he's talking about. I like to speak to my own personal experience most of the time, but you know I also like to bring in other perspectives. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to join me for a video, but he's dropping so much value on Twitter completely free, so make sure you give him a follow. I'll put his uh, account at the top of the description, and I'm gonna share with you a thread that he published just recently that I really liked, that I think we'll all benefit from. So, why don't we get started? All right, and before we get to reading that KDP guy's thread on Twitter, I did just want to remind you guys that in the description, I've got a link to my KDP Facebook group and email list if you guys would like to join. I'm doing everything I can to also help you get started and make sales. All right, so this thread is short and sweet, and I'm going to add my own kind of thoughts and opinions as we go through it. So, tweet number one, KDP guy has sold 18,000 books on KDP last year, and He's condensed that down into five tips, all right? People love lists. <laughs> if there's one thing that's true about humans, humans love their lists, and I'm no, you know, I'm no exception to that. I love lists as well. All right, tip number one, find niches that have low competition when you start. These could be micro niches that have 300 to 500 books, but not as much demand. I started with notebooks as these are bought as personal gifts, especially in the fourth quarter, but find whatever matches your criteria. So I've shared before, like I got my start on KDP in the month of October and really, I mean, October, November, December, that's the fourth quarter. So I basically started in the fourth quarter and I dedicated really like back to back to back three days in a row of just nonstop KDP, like boot camp. locked myself in my room, honestly feel pretty bad, but I missed one of my good friend's baby showers, but it was like an hour and a half away both ways and I didn't want to drive that far. And like, I knew, you know, my time was so limited that I had to make a tough decision ultimately the reason I shared that is because, like, you know, fourth quarter, in my first three months on KDP, I made over $3,500 profit. Of course, again, fourth quarter. I'm putting the asterisk there. I'm keeping it transparent. Um, but, yeah, that's why he mentioned, like, Q4, of course, whether it's KDP, Amazon merch, anything e-commerce, anything retail, you're going to see a spike most likely in sales. Now, he's saying find niches that have low competition. I know that most of you guys are like, thanks, Ryan. Great, great, great tip there. Um, of course, find low competition, right? If only you could just do that in life, like snap your fingers and have low competition niches. But here's the thing. It's not completely a lost cause. You can go and do it yourself. Amazon is a free website that you can use and you can just kind of cycle through ideas and try to find these gems or use software like BookBolts. Uh, they do have a, just pretty much everything you need to succeed at KDP plus more. But you can use basically product search. Um, I mean, there's a couple. There, I'm gonna do an in-depth review on Bookbolt shortly, so just make sure you guys subscribe. But there's a lot of ways to find qualified niches that represent good opportunity to increase. Like, no one can guarantee you sales, but there's definitely some ways to find, like I said, qualified opportunities as opposed to just uploading the fifty thousandth, um, you know, blank notebook that is themed after. Um, I don't know, like a, a joke between best friends. You know what I mean? Like a, a, a best friend gift or something, right? You're going to be number 50,001, right? Um, so yeah, niche selection definitely matters. All right, tip number two. Actually, no, this is not tip number two. This is elaborating. Ideally for no and low content books, you want a niche with the following. Less than 2,000 books. Books on the first page that were uploaded in the last 12 months. That's really useful, guys. If you use the free DS Amazon Quick View Chrome extension, by the way, uh, and I can link to that in the description, you can not only see the BSR in search results, but you can see the date uploaded in search results. And actually, I don't know if that's default Amazon functionality these days because I always have the Chrome extensions enabled. But trust me, free Chrome extension, grab it if you're not using it. I will link to it in the description. It's called DS Amazon Quick View. Uh, and books on the first page not having a massive amount of reviews. That also always helps. When I'm doing t-shirt niches, by the way, like when I recently did, you know, top five niches of the week, the first niche that we looked at of the, I think it was like the first eight bestsellers, like one through eight, there was a, I think three reviews on all of them, three reviews. Now, what does that tell you? That means opportunity is knocking because there is a new niche that people are buying. All right. Tip number two, be extremely critical with your designs. Ask for a second or third opinion from those who are close to you. 
and you know we'll be honest with you. So if your design sucks, you need somebody that tells you your design sucks. And notice he's talking about design specifically. Don't be scared to outsource for a low amount of money on Fiverr and Upwork. Otherwise, spend time watching design videos on YouTube. Of course, you can check out my channel. Check out Juna at Detour Shirts. He's really the design expert. Um, you can use software like Canva, by the way, which you don't really need design chops because Canva has so many good templates built in. So I will put links to everything. I'll put a link to Detour Shirts. I'll put a link to Canva. Um, this is probably the most popular, like if I had to guess, if I had to pick one, probably the most popular like design app in general. And it's built into a web browser, so it's very easy to use. Um, not just for KDP, but for t-shirts. Uh, they mentioned Fiverr. By the way, I just learned this recently, but if you use the code PRINTFUL10, when you check out on Fiverr, you save 10% off your order. So that is just a completely free promo code that I just learned about. So make sure if you guys do use Fiverr to hire somebody for anything that you take your 10%, because why not? Uh, or Upwork, guys. Um, Upwork, you're probably gonna pay a little bit more than you would on Fiverr, but Upwork also, if you wanna hire like a VA and have like repetitive work, that's a great option. All right, tip number three, if you have money, use ads. They'll boost your organic sales and put you in a great position for the fourth quarter. Here's the thing, I want to highlight this portion. They will boost your organic sales. Organic sales are not advertised sales. So this is a very insightful tip because don't lose sight of the fact that if you run ads, actually, no, let's not even talk about ads. If you increase your sales, period, it should increase your organic rank on Amazon in search results the higher you are to the top of search results on relevant search terms, generally speaking, the better you'll perform. And it's a simple equation. More visibility leads to opportunity for more click-throughs and you can't make a sale if nobody clicks your listing, right? So simple logic, all right? And if you use ads, you're basically buying visibility. You're buying impressions. Impressions lead to click-throughs. Click-throughs lead to conversions, guys. Keep it simple. Things don't have to be... Um, crazy, all right? If you don't, there are alternatives. You can get into niche relevant Facebook groups, Pinterest, and TikTok. Notice he didn't say like spend a bunch of money on Facebook ads, right? Like, like their Facebook ads will have their time, you know, their their moment in the sun again. Like there was, you know, a decade straight of Facebook ads just making millions and millions and millions of dollars for people that use them. Um, there's been times where like organic visibility was great on Instagram. It's pretty much trash right now. Uh, organic visibility on Twitter is going to be trash if you're just using Twitter to spam links to your products. Like, don't, I, I'm saying this from a personal perspective. Please don't waste your time creating like crappy content that's meant to sell people things because the algorithms can typically figure out that you are trying to take people from these major um, social media platforms and take them off the platform. So guess what those algorithms are going to do? They're going to suppress the visibility to your content because they want people like that KDP guy who's bringing people to Twitter. You know what I mean? That are engaging with his content, responding, liking, retweeting. They they measure all those metrics and they know that this is like high performing content. You know what I mean? Like the engineers are pretty smart. You, when when users give these valuable feedback, they, they can kind of figure it out. If you're just starting like a crappy social media account that's like just hoping to somehow get sales like magically, it's like save your time. Like there's much better, like honestly, just run Amazon ads, learn how to do Amazon ads or get a job at McDonald's, take the money you made from McDonald's, spend that on Amazon ads and watch what it does for your business. And like that KDP guy said, your organic sales over time, all right? Number four, once you move from no content books, start building a brand within a niche. If it's a gardening niche, you could end up doing coloring books, log books, garden planners, and other high content stuff. Use email lists with giveaways via QR codes. You can't lose by doing this. And yeah, QR codes is a great, you know, I'm always a little bit like, I, I still think, you know, unless you're in like China where everybody's used to using QR codes, because I've been to China and that's basically how everybody was paying, they would get, um, they would get WeChat out, they would scan a QR code and they would type the number that they owed for a payment. Uh, so everybody knew how to do QR codes in China, but I don't know about America, I'm not sure, all right? Personal opinion, I think there's still people lagging behind. So maybe you do like a short URL, like a bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, you can shorten URLs. Um, QR codes paired with bit.ly links, I mean, hey, you can do both. Uh, but send people to your email list. Guys, Aweber is what I use for my email list. They do it all and they've got the most competitive pricing that I've been able to find for a fully function, full functionality email provider, okay? 
this is your business. To me, like an email list is a business. So if you're selling products online, you want to be able to market to your qualified audience that gave you permission to hear from you. Meaning don't go buy an email list of unqualified random people. I mean, the whole concept of buying email lists, that's a whole nother thing to talk about, but at least give people a chance to join your email list. If you need to incentivize them with giveaways or whatever it is, go ahead and do that. And by the way, another great way to do that is using Facebook groups, like he said right here in the previous tweet, all right? So he's got some really valuable insights here. Five, treat it like a business from the start. I grew quickly because I reinvested from the beginning. I spent money on courses, outsourcing interiors and covers, products, tools, and mentoring. This was invaluable. If you can do this, it'll get you so far ahead in a short time. And this is something that like you have to figure out what works for you. But guys, like I'm just saying, if if let's just say everybody watching this video is capable of making $2,000 a month from KDP in profit. Everybody's capable. We're, what's the variable though? Exactly. How long it takes us to get there. Who makes more money? The person who spends a year and a half getting to $2,000 a month or the person who invests, let's just say $1,000 in everything that KDP guy recommended, tools, courses, mentoring, outsourcing interiors, covers, etc. They spent $1,000, so they start in the hole $1,000, but they get to $2,000 a month in nine months. Who makes more money? You already know the answer. The person who did the initial investment, like they, they, they had a massive head start. Now, that's just a theoretical equation, but oftentimes it does mimic something like that. Also, this is just me speaking personally, but um, as somebody who's been in the like online education for a while, like in my personal opinion, if there is a monetary investment up front, people tend to be much more committed and dedicated and see something through to the end. Like if I gave away all my paid courses today for free, a bunch of people would register, they would sign up and I can see their progress. They'd probably go through the first module and then just never come back, right? But the people who pay, guess what? They see it through and that's just my personal opinion. So I'm sure everybody's welcome to disagree. But anyways, guys, check out that KDP guy on Twitter. I really enjoyed this thread. He's doing content like this all the time. No, nobody paid me to do this. This is just me doing it because I thought he, this was a great thread and I love talking about KDP and learning from people that are really successful at it. So, um, you know, say what you will about Twitter, but uh, there, there's definitely some value on the platform if you follow the right people. So shout out to that KDP guy. Shout out to you for watching this video. If you got any um, info or you got any useful information out of it, please hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed and you'd like to do that, that would be much appreciated. Guys, thank you. I will see you tomorrow with a new video.